Hello, today we'll be finding out what's in this exciting box, and this one as well. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find the little bell icon, click on it and it'll tell you when I'm uploading stuff. What we have for you today is a product which perhaps has the best name I've ever seen in FPV. It's called the Geelang Anger 75. Anger. I like that. It probably is quite angry because essentially what we're looking at here is a 4S Whoop. And uh, because either they've seen me flying um, or making a hint, you, you get an actual spare frame with it. I checked that out. I thought it was just an insult of me. It's like he's going to fly and crash it. Let's give him a spare frame. But you, you seem to get that um, according to the pictures I've seen, I've seen on Banggood. Uh, so let's open this up and I'll show you exactly what we get inside. And it is full to the brim of stuff. I'll actually start with this box because you've got the uh, frame here. I just want to see what there is because there seems to be something else inside. So yeah, that's the spare frame and it appears to be a little foam pad that goes on the outside of this, perhaps for bouncing off things, don't know. Anyway, in the main box, first thing I notice is this USB cable. Quite unusual, I don't usually get those these days. Then there's these two, I'm a bit confused with these, there's two 3D printed bits. They look kind of, they've got this curve here. I wondered if the camera was supposed to sit on it or something. Let's pick the main quad up. Maybe if you weren't using this whole section, you could just have it with this. I don't know. It doesn't say. Anyway, this is the quad itself. Um, quite heavy, but that's because it's got this 260 milliamp 4S high voltage battery. Quite, quite chunky for a, a little whoop like this. And we're running 1202 6900 kV motors. So not really high kV, but we're on 4S battery. Uh, we've got an XM Plus as standard. I'm not sure what this camera is. Okay, the camera is described as a GL950 Pro. So it's Geelang's own thing. I do notice that it's flopping around a bit in here. And I also notice, which is also a little bit of a worry, that we've got this tiny screw. Uh, but I can see that we've got a screw in this side of the camera, but not in that side. So that's obviously come out during shipping. We'll sort that out. There's the XM uh, receiver at the front. Uh, underneath, we've got battery padding and these sort of thick rubber band type things to keep that battery in tight. Rest of the spec, 25 to 200 milliwatt VTX, which uses smart audio, 12 amp ESC boards, and an F4 flight controller, which runs the Matex 411 firmware. But also in the box, a spare canopy, some spare props, spare rubber band, and a little screwdriver. Two more LiPos to give a free altogether, which is pretty cool. Those little uh, bumpers you can stick on if you want to. Some decals, pretty pretty weird, but we've got some sort of stuck on there. They say G-Lang down the back and stuff. And finally, a set of bilingual instructions, which is mostly about how to plug in a receiver if you've got the plug and play version. But anyway, looks to business, looks quite mean. It's not really an indoor whoop. I'm glad it's got the XM Plus in there because it feels like it's gonna be powerful but uh, we'll check that out. Anyway, let's get on to beta flight, see what we need to set up, and then we'll get it bound and take it out for a fly somewhere. Okay, we've got the little Anger 75 connected up, so let's see what's going on. Beta flight, it's all fairly level, that's good news. Ports wise, not much going on there. We've got uh, Serial RX, obviously, and we've got RC Trap. That's weird, I thought it said Smart Audio, maybe I misread something, but it's got something. Configuration. It is running bi-directional D-Shot, interestingly, with D-Shot 600, which is quite something. Although the sort of normal thing is they tend to move the PID loop down. I often see D-Shot 300 with um, bi-directional D-Shot, but there you go. That's what it's got by default. And what else is going on? Weirdly, they've got a soft serial, which we don't seem to need. We've also got telemetry on, but we haven't got a telemetry receiver, so that's not really valid. Uh, OSD on dynamic filter on, I think we'll probably have RX set on because it's a little quad. Battery voltage looks fairly sensible. Uh, pit tuning wise, uh, looks fairly. It doesn't look like it's been touched, put that way. Uh, and certainly the rate profile it hasn't been touched at all. That's absolute defaults. Uh, you can see here I've bound the receiver and it looks like it's got the wrong. Uh, channel ordering, which it has, it's got T-A-E-R, I use A-T-R. Good news that we've got RSSI there, and it's even set, AUX12, that makes a change. Uh, just make sure my sticks do something at least, yes they do, that's always good news. Uh, modes comes with, let's have a look, arm, angle, beeper, air mode, flip over after crash, set. I'm just looking, I 
do think it has a physical beeper in there, which is quite good news. I'll check that out. But uh, it kind of explained when I plugged it in, it kind of made a bit more of a beepy noise than normal, and that's probably why we haven't got D-Shot beeper switched on, so don't need that. That's good news. Uh, motors, oh, we'll check this out to make sure we are not getting any errors when uh, we plug those in. Uh, OSD, what's it by default? Ooh, that's a bit of a mess, isn't it? A bit too crowded down here. I'll be sorting it out a little bit more. Come back for that one, and the VTX is obviously sorted out here. Uh, I don't think it goes up to 600, but we'll see what it does go up to. And it looks like it's yeah, all the rest of it looks fairly uh, sensible. So just plugging a battery in here to see, make sure we got no errors with the good old um, bi-directional D shot. That's good. Good. Yep, that works pretty sensible. I'll unplug that now. Oh, there's that beeper. Didn't like being unplugged. Anyway, that looks fairly good. I'll uh, set that up to my liking now, and we can finally take that out for a fly. Okay, just before we go out, um, I saw a few things on here I thought were worth mentioning. The first is about the USB socket. You'll see it's quite far down there and if I take a standard USB cable and try and slot that in basically we just don't have anywhere near enough to even get to it it's blocked by this bit so the cable that came with it and just to put it in perspective this is a normal one and this is the one that came with it has quite an extended uh, connector piece there which will go in there although it still does let me just put it in it still does really bump up against here and it, it gives me a bit of a worry that it's pushing against that USB connector which is uh, not that good. The other thing is that I put that screw back in but that is just screwed into this sort of TPU bit so the screw's kind of turning, it's in there but the camera itself is, is pretty loose. In fact this whole thing is kind of loose because what I think happens here is you'll see this is kind of sitting on top of that XM Plus under here well, under there, there is like a, a screw hole that would, I think, normally go into there if the XM Plus isn't there, but with it there, it means this whole canopy is a little bit loose. Then again, this entire frame is, you know, quite flexible and, and plasticky, so I think we're having to rely on the sort of the, the weight to, to make it not shake about, but we'll see how that goes. It was just a little bit of a worry. I don't I don't like this, this camera. I'm, I'm really worried that's going to shake about, but let's find out. Hello, here we are again in the field. Excuse my sweaty exterior, it's only 10 a.m. Um, it's gorgeous, but it's absolutely sweltering all week here in the UK. Uh, it's been so hot in the night time, no one can sleep because no one here has air conditioning. We're just uh, a bunch of idiots because we only have this sort of heat for about a week. Air conditioning's not a thing and um, yeah, I'm sweaty. Anyway, we got the little Geelong Anger ready to test it out. Um, haven't even hovered it yet, so I think we'll do a little line of sight test just to make sure it's okay and then we'll venture it out. I'm a bit nervous about going too far, although it's got a good receiver. This grass is super long and this quad is super little, um, but it does have at least a proper beeper. But I'll be checking things out to see if there's any your wash um, because obviously it's ducted and that'd be interesting and just see how it performs really. I've got a little bit of a worry with that camera that I talked about before. Um, aside from that, it feels pretty solid, so we'll check it out. Let's see what happens. Okay, so let's arm this thing and see what happens. Not that much power, it's about 50% throttle to hover, and that's because, of course, the uh, motors are lower KV than they'd normally be for a, a whoop. He's fairly happy there, quick punch. Got the normal thing where there's a slight delay. Let's do a better one. Ready? It's not like its own prop wash as you might expect from a whoop. But um, the rest of it seems fairly nice. Let's get it down and we'll uh, try FPV in it. Okay, so we're off into our FPV flight 
and instantly I noticed a couple of things about this and both to do with the camera. First off, it seemed to be overexposing. You'll see where there's light areas of the grass, it sort of turns to this white mush, so you really cannot see detail. And because it's overexposing in the light areas, it makes any dark areas look very dark. It's, it, once you're in the shadows, you're okay, but looking outside in it does look very very dark the other thing I did pick up on is that there's quite a lot of distortion on the camera I think the lens on this one is a 1.8 mil but um, there's you know there's good and bad quality lenses and this is not the best so you're getting much more distortion than I would normally expect it's a little bit off-putting in some ways it gives you a good sense of speed it reminds me very much of the Sailfly X the original camera in there had the same sort of issues but it kind of looked pretty cool when you were going along quite fast. Um, as far as it's flying though, it's doing a fairly good job. I notice it's not it's not super powerful as I noticed with the line of sight tests. You have to be sort of 40-ish percent before you really get going. Um, but I did do a test on a little dive and pulling out of that and I didn't see any yaw wash out. The milliwatts power for the VTX here is set at 25. Um, and I'm not going far, but I just wanted to check the transmission of our image okay and that seems pretty good I mean we're in a nice open area but this is a little tiny VTX and seems to be doing okay we are getting a few lines around though I do notice that anyway let's bring this down and look at the next flight so in this flight I bumped the VTX power up to 200 milliwatts and again it's looking fairly clean there are some lines that appear sometimes but the overall picture is pretty good but you can really see it sort of overexposing on those patches of grass actually looked worse in the goggles and it's coming out slightly better here when I look at my editor I was taking this on just a little bit of a distance flight although I wanted to keep it in this field because that other field is a pain to get to if it goes down there but we seem to have a good RSSI from that XM plus XM pluses will go for a decent distance uh, and certainly I expect this to be able to go a decent distance without any sort of problem um, and we don't seem to be getting any sort of break up from that VTX just a little bit of noise I think getting in there and you can kind of see where the shadows look pretty dark but once we get in them it seems to handle the color change okay and now we we're back to seeing a bit more detail again I'm I'm risking it all I'm still trying to get under this tree branch which has uh, caused me a lot of hassle and just doing that bit I noticed it looked a lot more fun when you're you're down and have proximity to something and it made me think you know I've got three batteries I've done two batteries in this field I should go somewhere else and, and do the next one so that's that's what I'm going to do on the next one but I'll just say that the battery um, although 4s does seem to suffer quite a lot when I when I use the throttle it really does sag so by the time I'm getting to two minutes I really can't do any uh, high throttle maneuvers you know I can still eke it out to sort of three minutes before landing but it's not flying it how I'd like to be so um, al although 4S battery the the combination of the weight the motors the props and the way this thing flies means you're not getting uh, any more flight time certainly than a less powerful quad on a smaller battery anyway enough of that let's move location and try and do a bit of tree proximity So we're up and running, but that camera again, do you see how it's whiting out the sky? And this is a, a tree I fly through quite often, and I completely screwed it up. Hey, it took a knock though, and it didn't crash out or anything. But yeah, this I thought it might be better in proximity, but because that sky is whiting out, you can see how that tree almost disappears until we're sort of on top of it, which made things quite tricky, because proximity is great for a smaller quad. It makes it feel much more faster. But when you can't see as well when you're flying, because you're losing detail in the camera, whether it's whited out, whether it's just not very sharp, that of course makes things a whole lot difficult. In fact, I could hardly see myself as I was going past there. So say whatever you like about the way it flies, it seems to be really let down by the camera. It's just not really good enough for the sort of flying you want to do with it. I have to say that the camera itself seems to be not it's not jiggling about too much despite it not being you know very well screwed in or very well secured uh, it's it's not doing too bad a job so uh, I was worried about that but it, it doesn't seem too bad at all 
and what I'm really trying to do here is just trying to sort of find some lines um, and seeing what I can see without hitting stuff if at all possible of course when you're going through sort of trees like this and you're you're looking for small gaps and you can't really see them um it's mostly just about luck for me and you know eventually that luck is going to run out and that's what happened to me so i was doing a little bit better at sort of understanding where the trees were and trying to spot them although you see i'm going fairly slowly here um, but I'm trying to sort of put the hammer down and trying to make it look a little bit more exciting because it, it is a bit sluggish in terms of what I'm doing and that's mostly because I can't see. Uh, of course there's stuff I just still can't see and eventually I am going to hit something and I'm going to crash and it's kind of like I was just trying to get through something. I thought we did okay there, we got through the, the tree but then we sort of went down again. No damage though, you've got to say this thing can uh, really take a hit. Uh, I, I bashed into several things um, and crashed it without it really having any effect, although I wasn't going particularly fast at the time. So yeah, it, it does be more fun in proximity, but again, that camera's still really bad. So can you actually fly a 4S Whoop in your house comfortably? And the answer, surprisingly, is yes. And this is because it actually needs about, well, I'm, I'm flying at about 30% throttle. This thing isn't crazy powerful. It's not gonna run away with you too badly if you're, you know, if you've flown before and you're reasonably gentle. Several things to say about flying this indoors though. One, it's unbelievably loud. My poor wife, who is trying to work properly and is having a conference call in the office upstairs, can hear it very easy from what she's doing. It has to explain that her man-child husband is flying a quad around the house and uh, apologise for my behaviour, basically. Uh, yeah, that's it. it's really, really loud. I mean, it's not subtle at all. It's surprisingly loud. The other thing is, it doesn't feel like a whoop. Um, it might look like one. But the weight of that 4S LiPo means it really has some inertia. It's, it's not nippy, it's not subtle. Uh, you, you can't just throw it around like you would a normal Whoop. It is, uh, it's, it's a bit of a sort of flying brick, albeit a small one. It, it doesn't feel like it belongs in your house. But of course, weirdly, it is small and will fit through little gaps and things just as a normal Whoop does. That said, I wouldn't really recommend it as an indoor quad. Perhaps if you're really desperate and you had this, you, you could do it, but it, it's not really the right quad for it. But you can fly it slowly and you can control it enough to get through reasonably small gaps, reasonably comfortable, although with a little bit of practice. I will admit it took me a good three or four goes to get through this gap here, not helped by the fact that the 5.8 signal in my house is absolutely being terrorized by the number of devices that are using it around my house now. It's just shocking how bad I am on every single channel just because of Wi-Fi everywhere. Anyway, if you could put up with the noise and you don't mind flying something a bit heavier, yeah, you can use it indoors. No, I wouldn't rececommend it. Well, there you go, a whoop in 4S. But did it really perform as expected? I'd say no, not really. Either I thought 4S was going to be super powerful or it was going to last much longer on that battery and in the end neither was true really. It felt a bit heavy and you needed quite a lot of throttle to do it. It didn't really have as much top end as I was expecting and the batteries didn't last that long. So in terms of how it feels, you know, I think I've had more fun out of a 2S or a 3S whoop because the power to weight ratio is that much better in a, in a lighter quad overall. I mean good things about this is it's got a proper receiver so you don't have to like, worry about the normal SPI receivers going duff. Ducted frames can have that your wash when you come out of something. So I went into plenty of uh, dies where I was 0% to 100% throttle and I didn't have any of that. That's a good thing. But yeah, that camera wasn't very good at all. I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, I mean, if, if you guys are wanting to see how it looks with a better camera, I can always swap that out. But I suppose we've got to ask ourselves, where is the place for this? And maybe this is just my opinion, but I don't really see the point of a ducted whoop of this size. And by that, I mean, you know, it's not your, your cine whoop with the sort of three inch props to stop you hitting people. This is just, you know, to stop you bouncing off casual things, which works well for inside 
outside ducks were a bit of a hindrance really. So I would have had, and I did have much much more fun with this little guy. This is the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle. Uh, batteries only 2S but much more acrobatic. Batteries lasted for much longer, had much more fun flying this than this. And for inside where it's all about lightness. This is the little Ishin UZ, was UZ65, which was fantastic fun. I really enjoyed flying that about inside. Little 1S battery, but super powerful and uh, will really have fun around the house. So whenever you've got something that might be a hybrid, it's not gonna do either one as well as sort of dedicated ones. Yes, you can fly indoors. Would you want to? It's seriously noisy and it feels much heavier than your regular quad and you wouldn't want to. Outside, yeah, you can fly it around. It doesn't fly badly, it's just not as much fun as a sort of dedicated proper outside ones without the ducks. That's the only problem. So I, I keep thinking to myself, really, is there a place for a ducted whoop that's mainly outside of this size? Please, you guys tell me, because I'm trying to think of where I would like to fly this over a regular one, and I really can't think of it, because generally ducted to me means uh, it's indoors, it's safe, you can bounce off stuff, you can turn around. But when you get outside, one's this size it's it, you know bouncing off stuff to an extent but but not a great deal and it's like meh. so it's all a bit meh really but ultimately i think it was the camera that let it down the most that was that was the biggest pain so you know we could do something we could swap the camera out it's the, the question is do we want to or do we just say you know there's better stuff out there but we do have to uh thank banggood for supplying this for review so thanks very much to them and of course there's links down below if you want to check it out in more detail Anyway, I hope that review's been helpful, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.